Hi and welcome back to the shop for part two of my big box build. This is in many ways the main event, the case itself. So let's get cutting. It might be surprising to hear that the Gerstner toolbox actually uses ply for the lid, back and bottom. If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. So I measured out the pieces using my curve clip system and I cut out the three pieces required. This ply will be the lid and I'm going to veneer it both sides with some oak veneer. And I'm going to clamp it between two 18mm boards. But first I should be taping a layer of cardboard to the centre of each support from the outside which will counteract the boing effect of the clamps. I've taped it down with masking tape to keep it in place. In addition, both press boards have a layer of cling film to keep the glue from the board. The first surface of the board was then coated in glue using a roller. We're spending some time to make sure it's nice and even. And the first veneer can be laid on. Now the second layer. Now the second layer. Now centering it in the press. On with the top there. And top blocks. And it's the clamps. Fully clamped, it's best to leave it at least 24 hours. It's difficult for the moisture from the glue to get out from all under there. It was an early decision that all exposed surfaces, even those not visible, would be veneered. If you used a template to cut out your MFT table, here's another use for it. Bolts through that and the table give you a large clamping area. The veneered wood was slid in underneath and the clamps tightened, and then additional pressure put on the center. When it comes to producing the oak timber, my bandsaw is not good enough to resaw pieces of this size, so it has to go through the table saw twice, inverting it each time till it cuts right through. The sides are constructed from solid wood in four pieces as shown, so the first job is to join the two verticals. I'm now going to glue the two parts that make up the sides together, but first I've put a layer of cling film to protect my table. Line them up, then as many clamps as will fit. Good job I made so many. With the clamps off, time to cut it to length. The sides were glued up as a pair, then the tongue and groove ends were fitted and clamped. The side panel was then cut in two, after the first bout of sanding, the sides are now ready to be cut to size. 
It's my intention to cut the slots in the sides to take all the other parts on my CNC machine. But first, I trialled it on this piece of old chipboard. Once you're committed, after a couple of minor tweaks, the sides are now done. Saves an awful lot of work. Using a milling machine certainly makes it easier to drill the long holes that have to go through the front piece to take the locking pins on the front door. These were drilled 7mm, then counterboard 7.5 to take the brass insert which will be later pressed in. Since I was already using the milling machine, I decided to machine the tongues at the size of the front piece using the milling machine. It was already set up and it's about an order of magnitude more accurate than the router table. Note that I'm using a packing piece, both to protect the workpiece and also to prevent tear out. And here is the tongue cut. I made it 0.1mm oversized to give a nice snug fit. And the finish? Extremely fine. The centre drawer separator was also machined on the milling machine. It's a lot easier to get tight tolerances. Construction is mainly tongue and groove. And most of these are cut on my router table. A little tip. If you're setting up a router table to do the groove for tongue and groove, use a drill of the appropriate size to set the cutter the right distance from the fence. This is my setup for routing the groove part. Rollers front and back to hold it down, a fingerboard and a cover to get good dust extraction. The bottom consists of a veneered centre panel with oak to the front and rear. The draw slides, 10mm by 6, were cut from a piece of maple and then cut to 180mm lengths. As there's 9 drawers, I need 18 of these. The front of the centre dividers have lugs formed at the top. This is what the door closes against. It sets the right distance. These were bandsawed out and sanded through the grades. I cut the wells for the side handles using my CNC machine. Although the CNC mill does 99% of the work of really closely fitting the handles, there's still a small amount of handwork to allow for the movement of the handles. After a number of hours work I have all the parts to make the main case. 12 sub-assemblies made out of 48 separate parts. That's not counting the drawers or its runners of course. The lid was made first. It gives me a size to work to. I can all sand the periphery down a little. But what I don't want is it's smaller than the box. First dry fit is better than expected. Just one tight spot. Passing one of the joints through the router table again, removed a high spot. It now fits quite well. Now with the central divisions put in place, I can take them apart again and put the slots in for the shelves. With a certain amount of finger crossing, I last trip to the CNC machine, put the final draw support slots in. I checked every joint to make sure none were bottoming, then reassembled it for a last dry fit before glue. But there's one more piece to make before final assembly. The lid peg runs in this groove so it slides back, but it would damage the corner without support so there's a brass plate 2mm to go in here. The plates are 15mm by 19, so I screw down to a wooden block a piece big enough to do both. First I milled around the outside 
to establish the DRO readings. It's then just a matter of following a simple DRO path, taking care not to overshoot. And that's the first slot cut. Repeat for the other side and I now have three faces plus the slot cut for each piece. Deburred it looks like this. Now you can do all the operations to finish it on the milling machine but I'm not a purist and it's a lot quicker to finish by hand. Except I got one of my numbers wrong, the throat depth. So here's my second attempt. 10 minutes or so of filing and it fits in place. Quite pleased with that. Traditionally these are held in place with a couple of small nails so that's what I did. Now finally after three weeks of making parts I can finally get down to the final assembly. Starting with the draw runners. And so, at long last, it's time to turn this to this. And no, I wasn't going to film it. It's stressful enough. Released from the clamps, it's now ready to sand. And finally, it's all sanded and ready for the lid to be fitted. But to do that, I'm going to need some hinges. So on that topic, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.